In the second segment of this lecture, what we're going to do is do our simulation again for turbulent boundary layer and then start to plot and comb through our results a little bit to understand the physics of this convective heat transfer scenario. Um, so first, what we can do is get rid of that center plane because it will be needed to, we need to eliminate it to conduct the simulation. So you can right click it and click delete and accept. Uh, yes. Okay. Now what we want to do is go to general settings, fluids, and you want to select turbulent only. And it, just as a note, if you had the wrong results earlier, you want to make sure that you had, you probably left it at turbulent, uh, from the, uh, momentum boundary layer simulations, uh, if they didn't match. It depends on which aspect of the assignment you were doing. So you, so you want to make sure that you go into fluids for your results and you're simulating laminar when we're doing laminar and turbulent when we're doing turbulent. So uh, go ahead and check OK. And uh, the boundary conditions are all the same. So we're essentially ready to go. Um, and we can run. And as we do, I'm going to insert a goal table. And you'll notice throughout the simulation in this case that the average value of heat flux is going to be way higher than before. And that's because of the difference between turbulent mixing and laminar mixing. So in a turbulent flow, you actually have mechanical mixing of the fluid um, because turbulence is characterized by this uh, rotational dissipative uh, chaotic flow field. And so uh, while we're plotting these nice, well-behaved uh, contours of the average behavior of the flow, it's really much more dynamic. And that dynamic mixing of fluid causes uh, more effective heat transfer because hot fluid from right adjacent to the surface is forced upwards. Cold fluid is forced downwards, which is then going to increase the temperature difference between the wall and the fluid. And so you'll get a much more effective heat transfer and mixing process. And that's often why you would like to design devices to be turbulent. Uh, sometimes you don't want them to be turbulent. If you don't want drag or if you don't want heat transfer, then you want a laminar boundary layer. And uh, so you wouldn't want drag over an airfoil, for instance. But if you do want uh, uh, effective mixing, then you want a turbulent flow field. Okay, it looks like our simulation has converged and you'll notice that the average heat flux has a value of 950 watts per square meter. So it's almost five times higher than before. And like we're saying, much more effective heat transfer. Uh, and that's because we're in this turbulent flow scenario. Uh, we can exit out of this. One thing, and I'll just recreate this here, that we did not plot last time, which we can plot now, it's qualitatively going to be the same is a surface plot of, uh, of the heat flux. But actually, before we do that, uh, you don't need to do this, but one thing I'd like to draw your attention to is let's look at that temperature cut plot again. Whoops, delete. So now for your turbulent results, let's show that temperature boundary layer. Let's take a look at it. So you can see, if you look, I haven't zoomed in at all. You can actually see the thermal boundary layer. And we couldn't before. You couldn't see the momentum or thermal boundary layer. And if you zoom in, it is obviously way thicker. And so that's a result of what, uh, what I was just saying earlier, is that this laminar boundary layer, and it's easier to compare if we look at this with the mesh superimposed. Um, oh see the same thing with the velocity. Before we had, were like six of these, right? Where it was colored, maybe about six cells. Now it's, it's way more. We can see very large gradients in both the momentum and thermal boundary layers that uh, were not evident in the laminar case. And that's because of this property of the mechanical mixing. But the other thing I said, which again, I'll draw your attention to now, is that these properties are very smooth. We're not seeing some sort of jagged fluid interface and that's because we're dealing with average properties. We're not doing, for instance, a large eddy simulation or a uh, direct numerical simulation. And those are modes of computational fluid dynamics where you resolve all of the chaotic turbulent motions in time and space. And so uh, 
And so in that case, uh, you could still recover these average plots, but we're doing something called a, a Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equation, uh, Navier-Stokes simulation. And in that case, uh, we don't access any of those uh, dynamic turbulent motions. All right, so you can hide the cut plots, hide the mesh, return our perspective to uh, above uh, perspective here. And now let's insert a surface plot. And I wanna do surface heat flux, which is already selected for me with 30 contours. And I want it on the surface that is heated. And I think there's a way to... You know, there should be a way to restrict the range. Oh, here we go. Um, let's set it from zero to 1000. Okay, so here's our surface. Oh. That would be the appropriate number for the laminar case. Let's change that range. I definitely don't want a thousand percent. I just set it to hundred percent. That's fine. Turbulence intensity. How did that happen? Okay. Surface heat flux. Okay, set this to zero, that should just be fine. Just go with the defaults. So we can restrict it if you want. So you can right click, edit definition, click the little measuring tape here. And instead of 10,000, maybe set it to like uh, 2,500 or something. And then you'll just see it scaled differently. But what we should note here is that uh, we've got heat flux being very, very high at the leading edge of that plate. And then it goes down dramatically. And, um, and that's because at the very leading edge, the delta T is infinity. Um, and then, uh, but for only an infinitesimal region of the plate, and then you warm up the fluid a little bit, the delta T comes down and so on as you proceed along the plate and the boundary layer grows. And the thicker the boundary layer is, the less and less heat flux you have because your temperature gradient at the surface is determining how much conduction you have out of the surface into the fluid. Um, and so this actually gets at one of the aspects of the, uh, of the uh, uh, theory lecture that I was emphasizing, which is that this heat transfer coefficient H, which is how you convert from that delta T to Q, depends on the scenario. Uh, it's not a fundamental property of anything here. It is an emergent property of the whole heat transfer scenario. It depends on the fluid. It depends on the uh, characteristic of the flow field. It depends on the boundary conditions. And if you were to say like have a gradient in temperature, that H would be changing dynamically. And the reason why is uh, because we're, it's essentially capturing all of the heat transfer behavior of the scenario relative to what we've chosen as our reference temperature difference. Um, and you wanna, and, and that's sort of the role of CFD in this sort of um, scenario is that you want to simulate a complicated heat transfer surface or a, a scenario, or you conduct experiments on that scenario. And then you uh, can characterize the Neusselt number or the heat transfer coefficient in those circumstances, such that engineers can use a lookup table, and then they can compute the heat flux that they need to get, depending on what we know that H behavior is going to be. But it's it's a shorthand. It's simplifying a lot of the physics and not really capturing the dynamics. But all right, so that's enough about that surface plot. Uh, let's hide the surface plot and then re-export the parameters uh, from earlier. So temperature, velocity, these should just work as is. So you can export those to Excel. And here I have my previous file still open. Select your data. 
can't remember actually if I selected that the way I wanted to. Okay, good. So and let's paste it. And I'm going to select all of these. And I've added some headings there that we'll go over in a moment, but let's just uh, group that together and call it turbulent flow. Okay, so next up, we are going to recreate that mid surface so that we can extract the surface heat flux uh, for this flow. So click OK, get rid of the section view, except. Now we wanna select these faces just like before. And so this is review essentially. So go uh, insert, surface, mid surface, all of the defaults, not defaults actually, all of the changes we made before are uh, still applied. So we don't have to uncheck mid surface for instance. Click okay. Now uh, I'll reorient our view. You can see that the plane has showed up there. We can look at the section view, which includes the plane. Now you wanna click the plane that we've just created, click insert, curve, split line. And again, all of the defaults should be fine now that we've done this before, except, and now we can select that. Oh wait, it didn't accept yet. Accept, please. Oh, wow, okay, sorry. Uh, let's delete this and just do it from scratch. There we go, now we've got the line. Yes, close. Now, what you wanna do is go back to X, Y, plot two, and that feature is gone, we deleted it. So when it's asking for a selection, you can now select the new line that we recreated, which is the same as the old line. And we can click show, and there we have it, surface heat flux, export to Excel, Navigate to the data, copy that data, paste and save because you should always save. And now what we're going to do is uh, plot some, some aspects of this and investigate them. So I'll just close this because we don't really need it open. So the first thing I'm gonna plot, uh, calculate is one minus theta. And so we wanna compare the thermal and uh, velocity momentum boundary layers. And so we're going to look at uh, UX over U infinity, and then we're gonna look at one minus theta. And the reason it's one minus theta instead of theta is because in this case, the wall is hotter than the fluid. If the fluid was hotter than the wall, we would just look at theta. Um, so click equals and we'll enter our Excel formula, one minus, open bracket. And in this case, uh, because the fluid is cold, then we wanna go fluid minus free stream temperature. So click temperature minus, and for the free stream temperature, you can just adopt, uh, you know, it's 293.2 and divide that by 320 minus 293.2. And then we can apply that to that whole column. And we can make the same formula for the turbulent flow. And for velocity, it's that free stream divided by 15.24. All right. And again, you can copy that same formula over to the turbulent flow. And we're just gonna drag these formulas down so that they apply to the whole range of data. And you wanna make sure you're regularly saving this. Okay, so now we have all the data that we're gonna want in Excel for this lecture. Let's begin by plotting the boundary layers for the laminar flow. So we'll go insert, uh, scatter with straight lines, Oh, wow. Okay, we do not 
help delete that. Let's try to automatically do stuff there, which I did not want it to automatically do. <laughs> so let's try that again. Insert that same type of chart. Wow, what on earth? Okay, you know what you can do? Select data, just remove all of these. If that happened to you, what happened to me, just remove them because we don't want it. Okay, so the first series name, let's call this um, the thermal BL. For X, I want you to select the Y values that correspond to the thermal boundary layer. And then for Y, we're gonna select this value we've calculated, one minus theta. And you can click okay. So now we'll do another one where we will call this um, uh, momentum BL. We're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna take the uh, Y values and U over U infinity values that we've got here. Click okay. And that's all the data we need for this chart. We're gonna add in those elements that uh, you need to be getting in the habit of adding in when you present data. So add axis titles. So I've added primary, horizontal, primary, vertical. Title your chart and uh, add a legend. And so for the legend, again, let's right click that format legend. You wanna uncheck the box so that it uh, doesn't waste space in your chart. And then I like to fill these in with a white background so that it goes on top of the lines. Oops, undo that. And here we will uh, call this a uh, laminar boundary layers. And for the Y, uh, you can call this, uh, I've searched for the Delta symbol here so that I can just copy it. And I like to paste it into the Google thing, the Google bar, and then you can cut. And what that does is it gives you a plain text symbol. Uh, I just find it annoying to have to paste special and stuff like that. And uh, I kind of always wondered if Google tracks when you do that sort of thing, like things you type in that you don't actually search. Um, but anyway, I do that for getting plain text a lot. So I, I bet Google could like identify people who use that strategy. Uh, so here let's paste Delta over Delta max. I'll make that a subscript. So Delta over Delta max, that's where Y axis is. Uh, and then our X axis is Y in meters. And, uh, and that is all we need to do. We're just going to now finally modify the Y value of this axis and click axis options and set it to 0.2. Uh, actually, you can set it to even smaller than that. Let's set it to 0.1, oh, 05. Okay, that's nice. So now that shows us some of the differences between these boundary layers. They are not identical, they are distinct. Um, but they're really close uh, if you look at this chart. Uh, the laminar boundary layers are, uh, and, whoops, what just happened there? Uh, and, and the turbulent boundary layers will see the same thing, but they're almost identical, the momentum and thermal boundary layers in that flat plate. They're very small, and you know, they're going, you're seeing both values go towards zero, one minus theta, and uh, u over u in, ux over u infinity. Um, but the reason why the ratio is so close to one is because we're looking at air and the Prandtl number is close to one. And so if we were to select a different fluid, we would maybe get a very different behavior in the relative size of these boundary layers. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is just make the same chart for turbulent flows to, I'll just go control copy, control paste. Let's do this for turbulent flows so that we can just uh, confirm that in fact, we do get the same trends. So first we have thermal. I'm going to select the X and Y values. Hit okay. And then we have momentum. Select your Y value. Oh, that was the X value. Now we want to select Y value. So UX over U infinity. 
hit OK. OK. Notice that. Uh, let's just save this. Looks like this is too narrow here. OK, so now we have our turbulent boundary layers. And we should uh, right click format axis and make this bigger, make it like 0.2. So that's our turbulent boundary layer. And uh, because it's taking a, a lot longer to develop here, you can tell already that this is going to be thicker. But again, the ratio between the momentum and thermal boundary layers is pretty much the same as before. And that is because we are dealing with a property of the fluid that has uh, nothing to do with, you know, that the ratio of boundary layers is a fluid property thing. So it's not going to be depending on that, uh, the Reynolds number dependency. It is a feature of uh, viscous versus um, uh, uh, viscous uh, forces versus uh, thermal diffusivity. And uh, the last thing we'd like to do, well, let's do two more things. Uh, one thing we should do is compare the laminar and turbulent boundary layers. So laminar and turbulent thermal BLs. And so again, let's select the data here. Let's edit the, in this case, this is the turbulent BL, because that's the temperature one. We already, we want temperature in both cases. Let's select here laminar BL, or I don't have to select, say BL. So for X, we want to go back to laminar. It's going to be the Y values here. And then for series Y, you can select one minus theta once again. Okay. And here you can see what we saw earlier and, and what you can really see by looking at the uh, preceding graphs, but it's nice to have them on the same graph which is that the turbulent boundary layer is much thicker than the boundary layer. And once again, we observe that even in the thermal case, uh, you know, we're not tending towards zero at the uh, edge of the boundary layer, meaning that the temperature is not approaching the temperature of the plate as we get closer and closer to the plate. And that is once again, because of wall functions. So complicated, has to do with modeling turbulence, but even though we're gonna have much higher heat flux in the turbulent case, we're not necessarily gonna see that very sharp gradient because part of it is hidden in the way that the model is being calculated. But the last thing we'd like to look at is just that, the heat fluxes. So let's call this uh, laminar and turbulent surface heat flux. And I will just change this to Q watts per meter squared. Oh, that's a superscript actually. <laughs> and instead of Y, we're gonna be looking at X. And we will want to format the axis to go from zero to five meters because that's the length of the plate. And now let's select our data. Uh, X out of that. So for turbulent, we have our X values. And our Y values are gonna be the surface heat flux. Click okay. Oh, what on earth did it do there? I'll just redo the whole thing in case it somehow screwed that up. Yeah, it looks like Y worked, but anyway, there's our turbulent. Now let's edit the laminar. Just make sure I don't get the same issue again. Let's select X. And next let's select heat flux along that plate, click okay. If we go to that last graph, we have exactly what we expect to see which is that heat flux starts off really high, just like we said when we were looking at that plate. 
and then it decreases for both the laminar and the turbulent. Uh, and turbulent consistently higher surface heat flux than laminar. And again, that's because of the mixing that we've been discussing. However, uh, again, just to draw your attention to that, even though that gradient is smaller than what we're seeing in the laminar flow, that's because the curve isn't coming all the way down to zero like it really would physically, it's a wall function thing. But the way it's being modeled is that we're still resolving the correct elevated heat flux associated with turbulent flow over the plate. So that is a, our overview of, um, of these thermal boundary layers. In the next lecture, we're going to refine our simulation a little bit and look at what happens with um, an alternate way of setting the boundary at the plate. Uh, so that is it for this lecture.